Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how you can take something fresh off the printer and turn it into something like this. Now, the main issue at stake here is taking the rather rough thing from the 3D printer, cleaning it up, sanding it to make it nice and smooth, and then painting and weathering. So I'm no expert at this field, but with my Witcher PC build, I've been playing around a bit and I've created this Witcher Wolf and I'm really happy with how it turned out. You probably already saw that in like a previous episode of the Witcher PC where I was working on it and I refined it and worked on it again and that's how it is now. So when you get your print fresh from a printer, it kind of depends how much you have to do. In some prints, like this one, I didn't use any support material because mostly it is supported by itself. But on other models, like Triss here behind me, I did need support material. And as you can see in this picture, you couldn't even recognize the print. There was so much support material. So the first the task is to remove that. And it isn't as easy as it looks. The easiest way I found is using a flush cutting wire cutter. That allows you to get onto all the things very nice and flush, but it also is a lot less dangerous than using a knife. I'm gonna have the one I use linked down below and it's really cheap and works perfect. You may also want to use some files and needle nose pliers to get all the stuff removed. And in some cases you will even need a knife, but be very careful with a knife and always cut away from you. Especially since these parts are rather like hard and you won't be able to cut nice and then oh, it cut and oh, that was your thing as well. And you don't want that. Then after you removed all that material, you can either just leave the print like that, but that also is kind of boring. So if you want to like go through the process of painting and weathering it to make it something really beautiful, then you probably first have to sand it. And because PLA melts rather fast, you shouldn't just like take a sandpaper and start sanding on it. You're gonna get a really ugly piece. What works a lot better is wet sanding. And if you've never heard of that before, basically you just take a sandpaper that is made for wet sanding, you take some water and you make everything nice and wet and the water cools the material and at the same time it also swaps away all the dirt. That allows you for to like not get the sandpaper clogged up very fast and it also results in the parts not heating up which with PLA is very important. Now you probably want to start at around 100 grit and work your way up to like 300 grit and at some point you will notice that it's kind of hard to sand the PLA to the point where it is sanded that well that you don't see any layer lines anymore. So instead what you can use is filler primer. We're gonna have a link down on Amazon as well. One of these is basically a primer paint that is designed to go on very thick. And that allows you to put a couple coats of that on and then sand again. And because you added on layers of that paint, which is quite a bit softer than the plastic, it's much easier to sand down. And you can just rinse and repeat those steps until you get your surface perfectly smooth. Or if you're like me and are impatient, you're probably gonna stop slightly before that. And then once you're done with sanding, you can go on to painting. And I'm just using general spray paint. Depending on your application, you may wanna use like some specialty paints, like some harder paints if you're gonna use the part more or you can just use any old spray paint. Just make sure to like put on many thin coats so you don't get any runs and everything looks good. But also don't make your coats too thin because then it might not turn out as well. I had that issue where I had to put on rather thick coats to get to spaces like in here in the mouth or in the ears and get good enough coverage that it's not just some dust on there. So just play around with it a bit and you will get the hang of it very soon. And after that's right, you can either just clear coat it or leave it like that and have a beautiful one color piece. Or if you want to take it one step further and make it look like it's not just brand new, but maybe like it's been used and it's kind of old and scuffed up. 
then what you want to do is a technique called weathering. And basically your goal is, instead of making it nice and shiny, you want to do the opposite and make it look old and dirty. And maybe you're thinking, why the heck would I want to do that? Or you're thinking, oh wow, that's actually kind of cool. So if you don't like it, then you don't have to do it at all, but it just gives your build or whatever you're doing a bit of extra flair and it looks like it's actually in use. So for me, I wanted this Witch Wolf, which is the medallion that Geralt in The Witcher 3 is wearing around his neck, to look like it's made out of metal and it has been like worn a lot and scuffed up and kind of rusty a little bit. What I, what I used is this little three-part kit from Tamiya off of Amazon, which is like really cheap and comes with three different colors. There are many different versions of it depending on what you have. Like if it's something that's supposed to be metal, then you maybe want to get the part with gunmetal, silver and rust. But if it's something that's supposed to be like out in the dirt, then you maybe want to get like a ground dirt package. You can also get multiple ones and mix and match them. The kit also comes with a handy little brush that on one hand has a brush and on the other hand has kind of a spongy thing. And this allows you to put on the paint much easier. So I've only experimented with weathering very briefly, but the technique I found that works the best is take some water, mix up some paint, and then just after you've like painted the base color, just paint into the grooves with some slightly watery paint and let it sit for a while. And take, then you can take a cloth or a paper towel, make it slightly wet as well, and then just rub the paint off again. You won't get all the way into like the corners and you won't get all the paint off. And that's exactly what you want. You want just a little bit of that brown or dark or whatever color you're using to stay in there and look like it's some dirt that has been in there but like it has been scuffed up and like turned around so most of the dirt has been wiped off but there still is a little bit left in there. And then once you're happy with the dirt, you maybe also want to consider to lighten up the edges a little bit, because that's where it's hit the most. And in case of metal, it would be a bit shiny there and a bit brighter. So you can use a brighter color and lighten it up a bit. The sponge part of the brush works really well for that. And then in the end, make sure to put a clear coat over this, because it's just basically water color. And it will like go onto your fingers or if it gets wet, it will go away completely and you don't want that. So if you followed all these steps, you should be able to get something like that as well. And if you did, please send it to me on Instagram or Twitter. My social media links are down below. And also consider using my affiliate links to Amazon or Gearpress, which are linked down below as well. They don't cost you any money, but they help me out a lot. Please like, comment and subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.